Uh, kia ora everybody, uh, ko Sophie Hoskins tōku ingoa. Um, I'm Sophie Hoskins, the um, Outdoor Education Kaiārahi for EONS, Education Outdoors New Zealand. And we are super lucky to have Karate Metcalf with us today, a teacher at Twizel Area School. Um, kia ora Karate. Tēnā koe. Uh, thank you so much for um, giving up your time to um, share share a little bit with us about what you're doing with um, the, the junior outdoor education um, program in your school and um, the leadership there. So um, I will pass it over to you to introduce yourself a little bit more. And um, yeah, thank, thank you so much. Well, that's right. Uh, 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 I uh, uh, Pākana te whenua uh, nuku tāpiti te tangata uh, ko karati tōku ingoa. Uh, e mehi ana kia koutou katoa, nau mai hoki mai ki te, uh, ki te kaupapa i te wā. Uh, so just to begin, uh, begin with, I'm going to go through sort of its, uh, the whakapapa of this idea. There's a bit of history behind it um, and how I got to this spot. Um, and... Yeah, and I'll just explain how, how that all works. And so initially, how this idea became sort of planted in my head was years ago doing outdoor education, being part of outdoor education programs through my sort of childhood and in my youth. Um, there was a big part that I felt was missing, um, and that was a representation of who I was um, in the outdoors. Um years sort of go by and I, I end up in the military for a number of years and then um, I start learning more about my taha Māori side. Um, so I end up in education years later um, and start looking at doing outdoor education in schools. And again, there were parts there that I, I thought could be more reflective of te ao Māori, te tai ao. Um, so with that, I, as I sort of went down my own journeys of how outdoor education could look, um, I started looking at how do I mihi to the awa, how do I mihi to our mountains um, and, and responsive ways that reflect mana whenua as well. And I think that's the important bit here is about how do we reflect mana whenua in our programs. Um, so in 20... 21, yeah, it is, yeah, 2021. Um, I went and did a full uh, Te Reo Māori immersion course. Um, and part of that course, uh, part of Kapopo Reo was um, to have what's called an ahi tutata and ahi fire tutata close, standing close. So having a fire that's close to you. Um, and it's like a passion project um and you could oh. choose it on anything um and i decided to look at well how do i uh embed purako aro whenua or purako kaitahu into my program um so that everyone is uh, conversant with these with the narrative of it, of mana whenua um so with the presentation I've got here. This is sort of what I, this is my proposal to Ka Whaupau Reo. Um, so for anyone that can um, call it or Māori or read um, uh, Te Reo Māori, uh, this, this first slide here is me saying essentially I'd like to build uh, resources for um, aro whenua knowledge um, in the outdoors. Um, and it's about how and it's also saying here, um, te matauraka. so it's only right to teach matauraka Māori when we're in our environment. It seems like it is the best vehicle to be teaching um, Māori knowledge. Um, so that was my proposal to uh, Ka Pau Pau Reo. Um, awesome. And why is it not... Oh, yeah, here we go. And this is sort of how I envisioned it initially. Um, it's based on uh, Payaka o te kaupapa, so the roots of the of our of the kaupapa, of the program. Um, 
is uh, essentially Te Whare Tawha. This is the image that you're seeing here is Kai Tahu's um, overlay of what Te Whare Tawha is, um, and that's a Whare Raupo, so a little Whare that was built within uh, yeah. Te Mana Huna uh, for people when they came here to go to Mahi Kakai sites. And same concept, it's about structural integrity, Taha Waiua, uh, Hende Ngaro, and Tinana. Um, and so we we base it on that. So that everything's about the the well being of our of our akuna. Um The year begins in the Te Timatango o Te Tau, and again, this is just like making sure that we look at how can we embed some maramataka into this, um, and still have it functioning within the school year. And um, so we started this year. Um, at Matariki, um, yeah, having our mihi fakato at, at our whare here in uh, Twaizal, learning waiata, karakia, pūrāko. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and yeah, really cool year for that uh, because it was the first national holiday for Matariki, um, and it seemed right. So, had the idea last year, waited to Matariki, and my principal was. Uh, you know, very supportive of, of this co Um awesome. Yeah, so Tima Tango Te Tau, and then we moved into Rākai Hotu. Rākai Hotu, um, to make it sort of simple, uh, came through and uh, created all of our lakes in Te Waipaunamu, um, and we looked at, uh, we'll, we'll be looking at how we can utilise that Pūrāko about uh, conservation with water, but equally um, uh, whitewater kayaking is probably going to be more pet crafting now. Um, awesome. Yeah. Auraki Mata too. So we're obviously very lucky where I am that we can see Auraki pretty much every every clear day um, from the from our kura. Um, so we mihi to Auraki and learn about that um, that narrative um, and. And not just actually mana whenua's narrative, we're looking at waitaha as well, because we do have um, kids that, that whakapapa to waitaha and looking at like what does that story look like as well, and just making sure that um, some of our uh, rangatahi that come from waitaha know that story as well and not just have it dominated by kaitahu narrative, Yeah, uh, being responsive to both as well. Um, and then Mahi Kakai, this is sort of where we um, do our survival unit. And this is actually the unit that I'm in at the moment um, and looking at how we can utilize the environment to find Kai um, and also how to build more kihi. And we've just started building a more kihi at the moment. Um, that's a raft, so, uh, raft yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a raft. Yeah, for uh, transporting Kai um, across waterways, yeah. Um, and it, as it's turned out, like these things do change. And I, I think one thing that I really, for me personally as well, and for the school, it's about having that flexibility because this is all new and it's like responding to how it's going to work. Um, so we, there are a couple of aspects of it that have changed. Uh, this was like my proposal to Kaitahu, um, and I've switched it around a little bit and I'll get into that very shortly. Um, and the idea with the whole program is to install a meaningful sense for everybody um, that when they walk around Te Mano Huna that they can see uh, indicator maunga like the mountains that our whakapapa would have looked at and gone oh yep I am now currently in this region and they would have because our maunga here are huge um and also our our roto as well. So um, wanting our kids to be conversant with that. Awesome. Um, so I'll just flip to the next image. And so this is the sort of refined aspect of it. So the previous slide was what I was saying to every um, sort of my proposal, uh, but this is how it looks now. And this is what I'm basing my program on. Um, so if we can you see my mouse on there? Yeah. 
Yeah. So Matariki, so we're looking at, uh, we looked at Tafiri Mate and his role to play in Matariki. Um, and we came through Hurai, um, Akuhata, Hepitema. Um, and we looked at, during all of those, we learned the Purako of Matariki, uh, knots, learning all the sort of basics of knots to form a strong foundation for um, for the following months, to, uh, for the following year. Um, and then finally, we looked at um, looked at Kai um, to get set up for Mahi, for our next unit of Mahika Kai. Um, obviously, now we're in our Mahika Kai sort of third here um, quarter here, um, and we've started building our Mokihi, and we've got a re what's it called uh we're taking tuna from our waterways that are landlocked um and transporting them in the awa so that they can um hide keep their tonga so going back oh. to tuna um and we're i've actually got that tomorrow with a bunch of students so we're going to go out and uh, set traps for our tuna um and send those and then relocate them um so they can go back to Tonga. Um, wow. So, yeah, Mahika Kai. Yeah, it's about um, the Kaitahu narrative of Māori who came to Te Manahuna, who set up camps and lived here and caught and caught Kai. But I've used it in a in a broader sense, um, and I'm looking at it as in conservation. How do we um, install Kaitiaki Taka? And how do we make sure that we're active proponents of that of that uara of that uh, value? And it's going, what can we do? Um, and so part of that is um, our conservation effort. So even when we're making our mokehi out of opo, that's actually a conservation effect as well because we're pulling all this old opo out, and it frees up the waterways and it stops the stagnation of some waters. And it, yeah. and it cleans that up. So we're pulling all that out um, and letting it dry, make it into more kahi. And actually, there's lots of people around that are saying, yeah, that's what we needed done a long time um, ago. Yeah. We have heaps of snow port around. Um, so, yeah, we're looking at Mahi Kukai in a, in a conservation effect as well. Um, yeah. So it's been pretty, pretty amazing. Um, yeah. Still yet to catch our first tuna, which is interesting. So I, I just thought there was when I grew up here it was heaps, and you could just yeah. go out and catch them. But um, I must be doing something wrong. But we'll get there. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, at the moment our emphasis is yeah creating snares, catching uh, rapiti, harvesting the the meat on those, cooking it, and tuna. Um, and watercress, so that's the kai that we're looking for. Wow, um, that's so cool. Yeah, and I, and I managed, I put out on Facebook the other week, I was like, anyone got a large pot? And then someone came up to me with this gigantic sort of stainless steel pot, um, and we're looking at fire safety. We want to put all of our kai into a pot and then um, and then eat that. Awesome. Um, yep, so that's the part that we're in at the moment um and next year um we'll have rakai hotu and then learn the narrative of him and actually learn um a haka associated with rakai hotu um yeah. and so that's going to be water safety pack rafts um some kayaks in there as well and just look at how do we maintain conservation with waterways as well um and yeah, we've gone down the line of pet crafts just for that junior school to give them those basics of of what paddling is um so that they can have these enjoyable swift times out there and uh in the on the waterways um uh, and then finally that last bit is auraki mata too so that's going to be our hikoi our, our sort of tramping unit uh we will go out and walk along some of our um old trails um and at the same time 
establishing our own sort of narrative there as well. And in this part of the year, we are looking at uh, a, a, one of the hikoi, which is over one of our maunga here, um, which would have been, well, it was part of uh, the first peace protest, peaceful protest. Oh, wow. And, yeah, it, and it's quite interesting. We It was before Parihaka. Yeah. Uh, we had a prophet, Te Mai Haroa, climbed one of our maunga and received a prophecy and established a township called Omarama. So we're going to be walking up that maunga um, and then having Karakia and Waiata at the top there. Awesome. Yeah, so it'll be that. But then, it, so at the end of that narrative with Auraki Matatu, um, our rangatahi will be writing their journey um and associating it with some of our ngātua Māori and just creating their own pūrāko that's specific to them and it's not wow. for you guys. and yep. uh, just saying to them like this is your story feel free to share it but if you don't want to you can write that and keep that and not and just make it more meaningful to you and I don't always have to know what your stories are mm. uh, that that's just yours and yeah i will uh support you with that yeah um and then when we get back around to matariki that'll be our final part where we have our tem- um uh a mihi whakato where the students that have gone through the program will start implementing a mentor to a kanatena concept of how do we make sure that you are successful through this program as well um and then that's so cool yeah so that that's where we're going with it um th- this is sort of uh the middle school program uh well it is the middle school program um the challenge at the moment is because it crosses over a a, a normal eurocentric year yeah. my year 10s are obviously in this sort of quadrant here next yeah. year the year 11 in here and that's yeah. a challenge because they desperately want to stay in there. Um, but the school isn't actually set up to support that because the uh, they've had to choose their subjects. Mm. And this wasn't in there. So there is challenges around that. Um, so we'll see what that see what that looks like very soon, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's the middle school program. Um, and we have another, I have another junior, junior program. Do you, you want me to just cover that one just real yeah, quickly? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, mate. Yeah, We'd love to. So, so awesome. it's, it's, it's very, very similar to this. Um, yeah. But we have, I'm just going to say I don't have any imagery for this. No. Um, the first part of the junior school, so from years one to six, our first part is called um, Te Mai Haro. Uh, he's our prophet, one of the prophets from here. Um, the next one uh, is Te Whare Mahana, which is our local marae. No, whare. Um, then it's Naroto and Auraki Matatu. And it's a game. So when I call out Te Mai Haro, they all have to stand up and uh, look towards Rua Tanifa, which is the manga that he climbed. And yeah. all the kids are now playing the game. When I say Te Mai Haro, they'll run outside and look for Rua Tanifa, the mountain that he climbed, and they'll be looking at it. Yeah. And it's just a, I like it because to the year one, they, it might not, they don't understand it fully yet, yeah. uh, but they are locating where that manga is. And yeah, and then we... So for that Te Mai Haroa, they first looked at it and then we drove to the location for, at the end of the first term yep. and we made to the maunga that he climbed and said that mountain there is the one that you can see from school and we sort of made this image for them and they're like, wow, I never knew that. Like it just looks mm. like a, an abstract mountain in the distance. Um, and so we taught them about the peaceful protest that took place um, and to my heart was message to to everybody of the world, basically, which is um, 
yeah, to always be peaceful in your actions and to always consider um, the hearts of the people. Um, so we did that. Uh, the second part was Te Whare Mahana. So we go to the, uh, Te Whare Mahana in town and we learn about the story of why that's there. Yeah. Um, and for me, it's a personal level for me as well because I, that was like my first ever job in my life and I helped put the weatherboards on this whare. Um, and we learn about Te Whare Mahana. And the action is sort of the kids put their arms up like a whare. Yep. Um, and whenever I call that, they create the whare. Um, and we learn about what is a whare. Like, yep. What is it? The like house is a place for care and nurture. Um, and then we go to the whare itself and spend time there. And when we go there, it's nothing. We don't go there to learn. Well, we do learn. But we're not going there to have a lesson. We're yep. going there to sit in the room and have a look at the walls and learn about what it is. Um and why it is essentially wow um and the third one is called naroto where they link up in threes and that's a representation of all of our lakes that surround uh twizel yeah so takopo oho pukaki um the three lakes that rakai hotu this man here uh dug out with his um his Court, the yellow um, rako there, um, and his court is called Tufakaroria, and we learn about that court and how he created the the lakes. Yeah. Um, and we go and visit Pukaki, the largest of the lakes, um, and we sing Waiata at a, at a known low campsite that um, Maori used called Punatahu. Yeah. Um, wow. We visit that, sing Waiata eat some kai karakia. Um, and finally, uh, which is this term, or actually next week uh, on the 17th, is a trip to Auraki. And that's Ooh. our final trip. So we do Auraki Mata too. And at that point, they all, um, the four of them get together. They create shelter and, we, and it's Auraki standing up tall with his three brothers underneath him. Um, and that's the action that they do. Wow. We, yeah, haere ki te auraki, uh, ki auraki, and then we're going to just sit there, sing a waiata, go visit the school there, um, and um, learn about, I well, actually just have kai, to be honest, and go for a hikoi. Um, and all of this is, you know, it's a game. It's also a waiata that I that I wrote for the school. Yeah. Uh, and they all know the waiata called Arifu Wana Te wai, so... And the waiata that they sing is um, the pepeha of our school. Wow. Yeah. Lots That's, of cogs in there. Yeah. 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 And just, you know, getting ready to build on that as they uh, move through into the middle school as well. And Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that's the, what the cool thing is at the moment is watching the kids in the, in the junior school, they're far more interactive with it. Um and it's those, it's our youngest of them all, eh, that are the most important because they're the ones that are going to carry this into the <clears throat> into the school further yeah. into the school. Yeah. Yeah. Far out. That is um, amazing. And just, yeah, I'm in awe of what you're doing. It's just so cool. Um, can I come and be a student, please? <laughs> what yeah. lucky kids. What lucky kids yeah, I... and lucky school to have you. Yeah, um, it's it's a good feeling to be able to do this for myself as well. Um, and I think it's it's about learning, discovering myself as well, um, and and the kids seeing that as also. And I let them know that I never grew up in a Maori world. Mm -hmm. I definitely grew up in a Pākehā world. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until later, and <clears throat> um, having these programs helps plant that seed earlier. Um, that wasn't planted early enough. I guess it was at the right time for me, but it wasn't in the schools when I was there, uh, specifically mm. the school. Um, yeah. And so just want to be that person that wasn't there um, when when I was at school. Yeah, that that's awesome. And, you know, and just, again, what we were talking about before um, around, you know, outdoor education, like, I mean, we call it a subject, but 
it's so much more than that. And um, it, it's just a great waka for going out and connecting to everything, connecting to our place and learning um, all sorts of different things and uh, all, covering all absolutely. sorts of subjects. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I think, um, yeah, it's only right that we are doing um you know, learning all those different aspects of te taio, um mm. and bringing a matauranga maori in those programs because um in many ways you know we're we've got this huge revitalization this renaissance happening yeah. um <clears throat> and it's creative and there's lots of movement in there i, I get it and i understand the difficulties with finding that strong relationship with mana whenua for many places <clears throat> um however um, that's a new journey and there's there's lots of exciting um, avenues to go down there as well. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, this this image that I've got here in front of me for any other, uh, anybody else that's out there just looking at, <clears throat> they don't obviously have to be this narrative. So to finalise everything with Matauranga Awaho, um, it is one of these programmes where it, everything's got to be weaved together. Like Raranga, uh, like our Fenu, like um, Harakeke, and making sure that school values are an intrinsic part of that program. And those school values, um, I think we'd all agree, need to be based around our relationship with Te Tiriti, um, Mana Fenua, and all of the people that are involved in our, in our kura. And weaving your school values with it, weaving mana whenua narrative through it, and making sure that we are <clears throat> utilizing um, those stories from um, from the iwi that we are sort of residing underneath. And mm -hmm. with when we do that, we do find those avenues to have the really junior aspect. And it's, the junior program for me is just waiata and game, kimu maori and being creative enough to build that yourself. Um, and mostly, in my experience with Outdoor Readers, we are quite an adaptable and creative bunch of people who can create games from information, um, and we're just utilizing that. The <clears throat> And then, again, once we start weaving more components through, we get to the middle school, a little bit more deeper understanding there, um, and providing time to um, visit locations to interact with locations um, in a, an enjoyable um, way using kopapa Māori, matauranga Māori through that. Finally, and this is the step that we haven't got yet, is um, having a specific outdoor education program in the senior school that really uh, final finalizes our narrative <coughs> and it um, makes sure that what they've learned over the last, in our school, over the last 10 years yep. is really consolidated inside those programs and that when we when they are learning about it, it's it's just naturally there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, making sure that our kids um, understand our pūraka Māori. Awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I think that's probably about it. Yeah. Lots of different cogs. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, I just, yeah, thank you so much for being so willing to share this because um, it's pretty, it's very special what you're doing and um, I haven't heard a lot of, um, you know, stories like this. So um, really cool for our kaiako to to hear this and see it as, a, as an example or a case study of um, some of that epic stuff where you're really um, embedding mātauranga Māori into outdoor education um and and it's so much broader than just outdoor education as well um so yeah thank you so much from myself and all the all the people that'll be watching this karate Good.